an ounce, dark and stormy night. Have you thought about what you'll do when life throws you a curveball, and your normal life is interrupted by a not-so-nice surprise? Hey, Jim Fugate here, and it's my privilege to share an ounce with you. It was a dark and stormy night. Thunder rolled across the narrow valley like the sound of a never-ending World War III artillery barrage. The rain plunged down as if an airborne ocean had ripped through the clouds to empty out right there in that narrow canyon. Water charged down the cliffs onto the road, seeming to want to drag us into the raging torrent below. Bolts of lightning instantaneously illuminated the world around us in an intense, blinding, white-blue light, then instantaneous darkness, except for the narrow tunnel of light carved out by the headlights. It was good to be inside the minivan, and if we could just get out of this narrow section of the canyon, we'd be okay. I kept the radio on to help drown out the sound of thunder, and the radio speakers snapped loudly every time lightning struck, and I flinched every time. The guy riding with me didn't. He was dead. And unlike Frankenstein's monster, the lightning wasn't going to bring him back to life. His head was no longer attached to his shoulders. We inched forward. Unfortunately, the fuel gauge had dropped empty some time ago. We might have another seven miles left in the tank, but at least 60 miles to go. Stopping here was not an option, so we crept along as best we could, with my fingers crossed. The next few miles seemed to be a thousand. Then, mercifully, the narrow canyon flattened out and opened up, and I saw the glow of a few electric lights up ahead. I'm saved, I thought as I pulled up next to the gas pump. I pulled out a credit card and shoved it into the reader, and to my deep disappointment, the credit card reader didn't work. So I splashed through the mud, ankle-deep puddles in the continuing rain to go inside and pay for gas. It was a very quaint little store, mostly dry, with a few drips and wet spots on the ceiling. The place was filled with guns and ammo and knives and fishing gear and more types of jerky than you can ever imagine were possible. Then I saw the clerk, a young, tall kid slouching behind the counter, bone thin and dressed in a vintage Grateful Dead t-shirt. With a sly grin, he said, sorry, nothing we can do. When the weather get like this, the internet stop working, the phone goes dead, the power goes down, can't take your card, but we got a generator so as you can pump some gas, if and you can pay for it, with cash. As I reached for my cell phone to call for help, he just kept grinning and said, that thing won't work here, even when it ain't raining. My heart sank as I lost hope. What was I going to do? There was no way I was going to make it to the mortuary to drop off the body without gas. Was I going to be stuck all night in the middle of nowhere with choice one, a dead guy in a van, or choice two, a very strange young man surrounded by an arsenal and a lot of cutlery? Well, which one would you choose? Then I remembered. I had 40 bucks stashed away in my wallet for just such an emergency. It wasn't a tank full of gas, but it was enough to get me back to the 21st century and the mortuary's cooler. Is this story really true? Did I have to deal with this scary situation? A life-threatening storm? No cell service? And being stuck somewhere that I just did not feel safe? I suppose it's hard to imagine such a thing unless you've worked for a mortuary hauling dead bodies like I have. And I have had some interesting adventures like this, but this particular story is fictional. So, here's the ounce. It doesn't take much to let your imagination come up with some interesting possibilities. Well, maybe not like driving through an apocryphal thunderstorm with a dead body. That would take a really twisted mind. Uh, but I digress. It is useful to consider possibilities. Things you might not be prepared for. Now, don't misunderstand, I'm not advocating that anyone spend their life worrying, but employing just a little foresight, recognizing potential hazards, likely problems, and risks, give you a chance to prepare a little. And if you're prepared, you can worry less. And that's it. 
and else submitted for your consideration. Do you think they're still listening? I hope so. Ooh, that was scary.